Hey, welcome back everybody. This is your next lesson which is going to cover multiplying mixed numbers. Multiplying mixed numbers is the topic here. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over some of these steps. You're going to want to write these down. So the first step and the second step, I'm calling these 1A and 1B because you don't have to do this one first or this one first. Either one of those could be done at the same time or one before the other. It doesn't matter. But the first step, change any mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now that's going to be huge. That's going to be the, the focus of our lesson here. You got it, a mixed number, change it to improper. Also, if there's a whole number, change it to a fraction. So how do you do that, you might ask? Well, if you have a whole number, like uh, 14, how do you write that as a fraction? Well, just write it as 14 over 1. 14 over 1 still equals 14, doesn't it? That's it. If you have a whole number like 5, what is that as a fraction? 5 over 1. Not 5 over 5. Don't do that. Don't. Don't you ever do that. All right. If you have a number like 2, 2 as a fraction is 2 over 1. That still equals 2. Seems pretty simple. Just put it over 1. The next step is to cross-cancel if needed. Cross-canceling might have been something that either I or Mr. Gasson did in class. And um, I put on here, if needed. And cross-canceling is something that you don't have to do, but I, I think it's a good thing to learn how to do. You're going to want to definitely work on cross-canceling. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I would definitely suggest learning how to do it and getting good at it. It's going to make multiplication with fractions and division of fractions when we get to that later. It's going to make those things easier. The next step is multiply across. Okay, just like you normally do. And the last step is to simplify. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into our first example here. And we have two fractions, and we have three and two-thirds times three and one-half. Now, you might be tempted to split this up and go, ah, you know what, Mr. Oliver or Mr. Gasson, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do three times three and put nine, and I'm going to do two-thirds times one-half and get two-sixths, and I'll just reduce that. But that does not work. That does not work. It might be a pretty good way to estimate, maybe, but that's not the answer. Don't ever do that. That will never be okay. So what you want to do, instead of trying to take a shortcut, like multiplying the whole numbers, instead of taking a shortcut, let's follow the rules. The first step is to change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. One thing that you might have forgotten how to do is how to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. So what we have is three and two thirds. So what you do is you start out with the, two, the three and the three, and you multiply them. What's 3 times 3? It's 9. And then add 2 to that. So what's 9 plus 2? 11. You get 11 thirds. So there you go. That's your improper fraction, 11 thirds. Now let's go ahead and change the other one, 3 and a half. 3 and a half, just do 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, not 5. 6 plus 1 is 7. So now you have 3 and a half equals 7 halves. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the problem using improper fractions instead of these mixed numbers. We do not want to do the problem like this anymore. That way is not going to work. This way will work, now that we have improper fractions in there. That way will work. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for any cross-canceling. And, you know, I'm going to look for some common factors there. For instance, 11 and 2. Do they have any common factors? Well, the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. And the only number that goes into 11 out of those factors is 1 which does nothing. Same thing with 7 and 3. They have no common factors. What I'm left with is just multiplication. And I'm going to multiply it left to right. 11 times 7 and 3 times 2. 11 times 7 is 77. 3 times 2 is 6. So that's improper. One of the rules is that you always simplify. And simplification also means if you get an improper fraction, you change it back to a mixed number. So let's go ahead and change 77, 6 into, go ahead and change it into a mixed number. 77 divided by 6. That's what I'm going to do. 77, 6. So how many times does 6 divide into 7? Goes into it once. Subtract. I get 1. Bring down the 7. And I got 17. 6 divides into 17. A total of 2 times. Not 3 times. 3 would be 18, and that's too big. Subtract 5. So our answer is going to be 12 and what? 12 and 5, 6. Here's your answer. 12 and 5, 6. And we're done. So you can see, doing the shortcut didn't work. We could not do that. 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 thirds times 3 halves is 2, 6. That does not work at all. Our next problem, 2 and 2 thirds times 3 and 3 fourths. Our first step is to convert anything that's a mixed number into improper. 2 and 2 thirds equals 8 thirds. 3 and 3 fourths equals 15 fourths. So that was our first step, 
we change these things into improper fractions. Do you have to do that? Yes, you better do that every time. Don't take the shortcut, it doesn't work. So now here's our problem, we have 8 thirds times 15 fourths, and I'm gonna look for any cross canceling here. Go ahead and look at 3 and 15 first, and ask ourselves, do they have any common factors? And they do. There's a number that can go into three, that can divide into three, and a number that can also divide into 15. And what number is that? Three, divide by three. 3 divided by 3, and 15 divided by 3. So these numbers can reduce just like a fraction reduces into lowest terms. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3 divided by itself is 1. Notice I crossed out this number. I don't need it anymore. I do not need the 15 anymore. Now we have a 5 and we have a 1. Much easier numbers. I'd rather multiply 8 times 5 than 8 times 15, wouldn't you? Yeah, I bet you would. Let's look at 8 and 4. Now 8 and 4 divides by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then 4 divided by itself is 1. There you have it. Now you have all new numbers here, and it doesn't matter that we change these numbers. These, this 8 turned into a 2. This 15 turned into a 5. It's okay that that happened, because it all reduces just like a fraction does. So now let's just multiply what's left. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 1, not 2, it's 1. What's 10 over 1 equal? It equals 10. There you have it, everybody. 10. That's the answer. Okay, next problem here. So now we have 1 and 2 fifths times 5. A mixed number times a whole number. So the mixed number, 1 and 2 fifths, equals 7 fifths. And 5 equals 5 over 1. So there's what you're going to multiply. Instead of doing 1 and 2 fifths times 5, we're going to do 7 fifths times 5. 5 over 1. So now that we have this rewritten, let's look for cross-canceling. And right here, the thing that kind of jumps right out at you is the 5s. And whenever you have the same number in multiplication, whenever you have the same number diagonal from each other, they cancel each other out. 5 in itself can be divided by 5. They turn into 1s. So they don't turn into zeros, they just turn into ones. That's what I mean by canceling each other out. So now we have one. And then the other set, the seven and one, will not cross cancel. So what are you left with? We're left with seven times one, which is seven. One times one, which is one. And seven over one equals seven. And you're done. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is put together three practice problems. Go ahead and practice these out on your own. Give it a try. Write these problems down. Hit pause. Do them. And then check your answers. I'm not going to really explain my answers. I'm not going to really talk these through. I'm just going to write it down and kind of uh, fast forward through it all. So if you have any questions, let me know in class the next day and we can help you out. And um, other than that, have a great night and I'll see everyone tomorrow. Take care.